another amen. amen. I welcome you to our workers' training tonight. I pray the Lord will speak to every heart in Jesus' name. And the word will profit you. I did hear a good amen for that. Move us forward in the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for the privilege of coming together. Thank you for your word. Thank you because there's something in this world today that will move us forward, energize us, and be profitable to every life in Jesus' name. Do good in our lives. Do good in other people's lives through us in Jesus' name. Bless us and use us to bless other people. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 29. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. Reading from verse 29. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. The Spirit said unto Philip, Go near. Join thyself to this chariot. The chariot was a means of movement in those days, like a car, like a taxi, like a bus, like a train, like an aeroplane, like any means of movement. And the eunuch was coming from worship. He was coming from Jerusalem. And the angel of the Lord told Philip, get out from where you are. It was a great revival in Samaria. And the angel of the Lord said, arise, come out of that place and go to the desert. And without asking any question, he left and he was in the desert. And it happened to be now where the man riding the chariot was moving. And the Spirit of the Lord said unto Philip, Now go near. And as you go near, join yourself to this chariot. What a wonderful thing that those believers of those days, as they professed to be saved, they were connected with the Lord, and the Spirit of God always spoke to them. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And one of the evidences we know that we're children of God is that we're open to the Spirit of God. And the Spirit can speak to us. When people said in those days they were saved, they were sanctified, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they were in constant communication with the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God could speak to them, and they will know that's not Satan. They will know that's not my mind. They will know that is the Spirit of God speaking to them. It wasn't peculiar to Philip. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 19. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, verse 19. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, the Spirit said unto him. You see those days when they said they were saved, sanctified, and baptized in the Holy Ghost, there was a constant, a daily evidence in Lives. They were not living their lives out of their own personal ideas. They were not living their lives out of the historic tradition. I did that yesterday, I did that last week, I did that last year, I'm going to do it today. They were fresh because of the constant communication of the Spirit of God with them. Look at Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 12. And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting, nothing doubting. You see, their lives were sure, and their lives were profitable because of this connection, communication between them and the Spirit of God. I pray that our lives will be open to the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Did I hear an amen there? 
And we're looking at Acts chapter 8. Let me read from verse 29 so you can understand. Verse 30. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran. And Philip ran. The obedience to the scriptures, the obedience to the Spirit of God in those days, the obedience was spontaneous. And the obedience was prompt. And the obedience was the direction of where the Lord was calling them. And they didn't just sluggishly follow the directives of the Spirit. They didn't uh, just uh, haphazardly follow the leading of the Spirit. They were excited about it. And it was a great thing for them, for them to hear that the Spirit is talking to them. And Philip ran. I must ask you some questions now. When was the last time you really heard and really knew the Spirit of God spoke to you? How many of the things you do in talking to people, contacting people, and in addressing people and showing them, sharing with the gospel of them, how many times do you really know that you know without the shadow of doubt that the Spirit of God spoke to you? How often in your life, in different matters of life, in your family, in your decisions, in your place of work, in your actions, how many times do you know that the Spirit of God actually speaks to you? And when the Spirit of God speaks to you, do, do you weigh it and balance it? Or do you run with the directive and Philip ran, see that to him and had him reach the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? We have a major challenge in evangelism. The major challenge is confronting you know, a stranger. A stranger we have never met, a stranger we have never known, and we see him doing something right or wrong. This man happened to be reading the scriptures, and Philip knew the contact point to start a conversation so that he will pull him out of himself, and then as they began to converse, he'll find the place and the point to introduce Jesus, the Savior, unto him. Understandest thou what thou readest? Maybe people are talking and say, do you understand what you are talking about? The politics of the land, the situation in the land, and the economy of the land. And you want to make a bridge between what they are doing and what you want to say. The bridge is very important in communication. What you are doing, do you understand the meaning of this? How does God look at this? What you are reading, do you understand this? How will the Lord look at this one? Understandest thou what thou readest? And the man replied in verse 31, and he said, How can I accept some man shall guide me? I need a guide. I volunteer, I'll be the guide. I need a counselor. I volunteer, I'll be the counselor. I need somebody to show me how to do this, how to understand this. I'm available. I can show you. I understand it and I can tell you what you ought to do. You see, the situations will open up, opportunities will open up, and then you offer yourself and you're able to lead them. And then it says in verse 32, and the place of the scripture. Which he read was this, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before a sharer, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, he still continuing to reach, and he says in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, I beg of you, I plead with you, of whom speaketh the prophet this of himself? Is that, is Isaiah talking about himself? Or of another, of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached. Unto him, tell me, Jesus. Preach Jesus unto him. The man was personally searching the scriptures. And eventually the Savior was introduced to him. 
the man was purposefully searching the scripture and the savior then through that scripture appeared unto him the man was positively searching the scripture i must get something out of this it wasn't just traditionally reading the scriptures there was something on his mind that's why the angel told philip live where you are and go to the desert that's why the spirit told philip join yourself to this chariot tonight we're looking at that passage and i'm talking to you on the prophet of purposefully searching the scriptures the prophet of purposefully searching the scriptures three things we're looking at number one personally searching the scriptures to be saved personally searching the scriptures to be saved in the case of this man he wasn't saved and was searching the scriptures he's gone to worship but he's not got much from that worship and he was personally searching the scriptures so he can be saved but we can make it broader we can make it go further if you are sick personally searching the scriptures to be healed if you have any oppression any attack any affliction personally searching the scriptures to be delivered if things are upside down in your life you can't understand there's confusion personally searching the scriptures to be set free like British and if it appears everything is against your life and you feel that you are so hedged in and you're so confined personally searching the scriptures to be released whatever need it is in your life the solution is there in the word of God and instead of complaining instead of running here and there personally searching the scriptures to be saved point number two purposefully studying the scriptures to be steadfast after we come to know the Lord after we know that by the grace of God I'm saved I'm born again I'm a child of God but I've heard about many who rise and fall I've heard about many who go forward and go backward I've heard about other people who cannot endure unto the end I want to be steadfast I want to be stable I want to be steadfast and I'm purposefully studying the scriptures to be steadfast point number three purposefully sharing the scriptures that's what philip did he looked at the man he saw where he was reading he was not going to share with him and this is positively sharing the scriptures to save souls to save souls to lead other people to salvation to lead other people to real conversion positively sharing the scriptures to save souls number one personally searching the scriptures to be saved if we want to know about the savior if we want to know about christ who died on the cross of calvary let's go back to the scriptures that means to the old testament scriptures because where the man was reading was actually old testament let's look at isaiah i'm reading from chapter 53 Isaiah chapter 53 and I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 53 reading from verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Now we're not just reading it. We are searching it. We're looking at it. We're interpreting it. Surely, he has borne our griefs. The Lord has been thinking about me. God has been thinking about me. He knows my grief. He knows my burden. He knows my fear of final judgment. And he has sent the relief. He has sent the Savior. He has sent the solution. Because now, he was meeting of God. How could that be? He had no sin, but my sin, for my sin, he was meeting. But he was wounded for our transgression. All the transgressions we had done and committed, Christ, this one that the eunuch of Ethiopia was reading about, has actually been wounded for transgression. He was bruised for iniquities. 
and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Looks like we can have peace with God. And all the division between us and the Almighty God, everything can be cancelled. Then he tells us, and Jeb with his stripes were healed. All we like sheep, everyone. All we like sheep. There's no rejection of anyone. All we like sheep have gone astray. And we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. It says salvation is available for everyone. The iniquity of us all have been laid upon this substitute and this sacrifice. As I personally search that, it gives me confidence, it gives me peace of mind, it gives me the understanding God has been thinking about me. And if I call upon him, I will be saved. Now the man happened to be looking at Isaiah. What if you was reading from any part, any other part of the Bible? For example, let's look at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, it says, searching the scriptures. We're searching the scriptures to be saved. We're searching the scriptures to be free from our guilt. And in Genesis chapter 3, I'm reading here from verse 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Man had just fallen. Adam and Eve had just fallen. And all their posterity, everybody following after them, born by them, will be, will be in a fallen nature. And with that fallen nature, they are kind of uh, expelled from the presence of God. But how then can we be saved? There is the siege of the woman coming. The siege of the virgin coming. And through that seed, we're going to have eternal life. We're going to be reconciled again unto God. Look at Matthew chapter 1, reading from verse 23. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall conceive without any connection with a man. A virgin shall, shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us. At the garden of Eden, man was separated from God. And man was driven away from God. But if somebody coming, is the seed of the woman and is son of a virgin and that son of the virgin is Emmanuel and that son of the virgin will connect us back again unto God I'm searching the scriptures to understand even from Genesis that my return to God my connection with God my conversion to God has been planned from the day of the fall of man it tells us in verse 21 Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins the problem of sin now can be solved the problem of sin can now totally be resolved because Jesus Christ the seed of the woman the son of the virgin Emmanuel he has come and is going to die for the sin of everyone and because of that uh, propitiation because of that atonement everyone now can feel free and you can know that God has prepared this salvation for you just like the eunuch eventually understood this is for me look at Exodus chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 12 Exodus chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 12 here was a situation now that the whole of the nation Israel was in captivity they were in bondage in bondage to Egypt and they wanted to be free how would they be free no one was powerful enough to set them free 
no one was powerful enough to deliver them. How did deliverance eventually come? How did redemption eventually come? How did salvation eventually come? In Exodus chapter 12, reading from verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And then it says, And the blood shall be for you, shall be to you, for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, the blood of the Lamb, the blood, the blood of the perfect lamb, a lamb without blemish that everyone took. And as they took that lamb and they slew the lamb and they shed the blood, they applied the blood. And the Lord says, if I see the blood, I will overlook all your past sins all your past iniquities, all your past transgressions, I will count it to mean that you have suffered the death penalty through the blood that I see. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And then it says, And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I shall smite the land of Egypt. Remember, we're searching the scriptures and we're finding out. Do you understand what you read in Exodus chapter 12, verses 12 and 13? How can I, except some man, should guide me? What blood is this ultimately talking about? Is he talking only of the blood of an animal? Or is he pointing to the blood of a substitute that will come and take all my sins away and take all my guilt away? Look at First Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 18. First Peter chapter 1. Reading from verse 18. For as much as you know, that she were not redeemed with the corruptible, with corruptible things as silver and gold. From your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. But, look at this, with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish, without spot. That that blood we're reading about in Exodus, as it happened to them, as we search the scriptures, every part of scripture, and as we look very closely at what the scripture is saying, then you know that this has been fulfilled in Christ. And if you're searching for yourself from there, you can preach to yourself Jesus Christ. If you're searching it for another person or with another person from there, you can preach unto them Jesus Christ in Leviticus chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 11. Leviticus chapter 17. And we're reading from verse 11. It says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. Atonement for your souls, the blood. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Does your soul feel doubtful, discouraged, confused, a lot of questions running in your mind? Will I be ultimately saved? Am I accepted in the beloved today? Are my sins washed away? Is my guilt totally gone? Is there something God will still condemn me about? Or am I totally free from condemnation now and forever? It says, it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul, for your soul. Look at Romans chapter 5. In Romans chapter 5, I read from verse 8. Romans chapter 5, we're looking at verse 8. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And while you are personally searching the scriptures for yourself, 
where you see us, you have to personalize it. Christ died for me, even me, with all my sins, with all my shame, with all the evil I've done in the past. Christ died for me, much more than being now justified by his blood. The Father has given the blood to make atonement for your soul. And then you can say, praise the Lord. You can stop right there and offer a prayer of praise unto God for his blood. The blood that makes atonement for me, for me, for me. It says, and much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You're not in a hurry. You're searching for profit. You're not reading and searching to say, I read 20 chapters today. I read 5 chapters today. Even if it's that one single verse linking you up to the blood that makes the atonement for the soul, you rejoice in the fact that the blood of Jesus has been shed as proclaimed by God himself and you are saved from the road to come verse 10 for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son much more be reconciled we shall be saved by his life saved by his life what he did is put into my account his righteousness is put into my account. His uprightness is put into my account. Because that blood, when it washed me, converted me, and changed me, also granted me the life of righteousness of Christ. In verse 11, and not only so, but we also joy and rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this by whom we have when now we have now received what have we received the atonement the atonement at one moment he has atoned for all my sins and as you personally search the scriptures you get the benefit we're looking at numbers chapter 21 Numbers chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 6. Numbers chapter 21, verse 6. And the Lord sent fairy serpents among the people, and they beat the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the people said unto, and the Lord said unto Moses, Wait a minute. The prayer of Moses alone will not save the people. The prayer of a priest alone will not save the soul. The prayer of a church father, of a church founder, will not save the soul. The prayer of a reformer, Moses, alone will not save. Search the scriptures to be saved. And search the scriptures to be sure what's the way of salvation. Look at verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent. And set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone, 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 he doesn't reject anyone, is not willing that anyone should perish. And every one of us were part of the atonement that Jesus made on the cross of Calvary. If you were the only sinner in the world, Christ would still have died. You are that precious to God that everyone that is beating, when he looks upon it, what will happen? Tell me what will happen. Tell me out aloud what will happen. Shall leave. And Moses made a serpent of brass 
and put it upon a pole and it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man any man when he beheld the serpent of brass what happened he lived look at john chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 14 all those things that happened to them they point to the lord jesus christ our savior the final sacrifice jesus christ our substitute it says in john chapter 3 verse 14 and as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man jesus christ be lifted up that whosoever look at that that whosoever anyone a great sinner a minor sinner a criminal somebody has done something that even a society community will not pardon him that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever that's the word again whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life everyone that believes will have everlasting life we're looking at deuteronomy chapter 18 and i'm reading from verses 18 and 19 deuteronomy chapter 18 reading from verse 18 and verse 19 searching the scriptures personally to be saved to see that your salvation is revealed there and it reveals jesus unto you who will take away all your sin Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18 i will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that i shall command him here is the almighty god speaking to moses and he's speaking of somebody who will come and he says i'll put my word in his mouth and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hack in unto my words which he shall speak in my name i will require each of him again we can ask the question that uh, the eunuch you know, of Ethiopia had when uh, Philip said, Understandest thou what thou readest? I will send a prophet. I'll give him my word. He'll speak my word to the people. And anyone that will not accept that word will be doomed forever because that one that I will send will be my final connection with the sinful world. Understandest thou what thou readest, what thou readest, of whom speaketh Moses this, of uh, my relative of his, or of another man. Acts chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 19. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, the Father, God Almighty, will send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which god has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began for moses truly said unto the fathers a prophet shall the lord your god raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me 
him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people because the final word coming from the almighty god yea and all the prophets from samuel and those that followed after as many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these days ye are all ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which god made with her father saying unto abraham and in thy sea shall all the kindreds of the earth be saved look at the result of christ coming unto you then first god had been raised up his son jesus sent him to bless you in turning away everyone in turning away that's what he came to do in turning away every one of you from his iniquities and so as we look at the old testament you go on to joshua to judges until we get to malachi and you will find out that our salvation has been revealed from all those righteous of the old testament and we need to search the scriptures so that we're sure of our salvation point number two now purposefully studying the scriptures to be steadfast after we're saved you need to be solid steady and steadfast in your faith in following after the lord and what's going to do it when you purposefully yourself search the word of god and you say i want to be strong and you're searching the word not just to read the bible but to make sure that you are solid you are sound you are steadfast you are strong in john chapter 5 reading from verse 39 john chapter 5 verse 39 in verse 39 search the scriptures a command from christ search the scripture and exhortation from christ search the scripture a compelling word from christ and you don't need to be confused i don't need to worry about will i make it will i not make it search the scripture can i be stronger than i am today search the scriptures can i be victorious search the scripture can i be an overcomer in everything the devil and the messengers of satan what they throw at you can you stand firm incorruptible and unbeatable yes you can how such the scriptures for in them you think ye have eternal life and they those scriptures are they will testify of me you can be sure thank god you're sure i say thank god you're sure look at john chapter 6 john chapter 6 reading from verse 66 from that time many of his disciples went back and walk no more with him. It happened at that time. Many people went back. Their mind was on another thing, not on the scriptures. If they were searching the scriptures and studying the scriptures purposefully, nothing will beat them back. Nothing will send them back. Nothing you know, will bring so much confusion to them. They will say, I don't understand that. That's too tough. That's too hard. And I cannot unravel. I cannot solve the problem. And therefore they went back. But look at this, verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure. 
not just to believe, we believe and we're sure you'll come to that point in your life that you know for a certainty there's no other salvation, there's no other savior, and there's no other way of escape. It is this way, the only way you'll say we believe and we're sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. If you search the scriptures, you'll know that this is the Christ, no other one. You will know he is our Savior, no other one. You will know that he is the only means by which we get to heaven. There's no other way. Acts chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 11. Acts chapter 17, we're reading from verse 11. Purposefully studying the scriptures to be steadfast. In verse 11, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Now the Thessalonians were very good. They received the word of God. They turned away from idols to serve the living God. And they were waiting for Christ, the coming one from heaven. But it says, these ones in Berea were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Number one, they received the word, the word of salvation. And they received that with all readiness of mind. And now look at this. And they searched the scriptures daily. Not only on Sunday. They searched the scriptures daily. Not only corporately with other people, personally. They search the scriptures daily to see whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, and also of honorable women, which were Greeks and of men, not a few. They were so convinced, they were so persuaded that they could not talk to other people, touch other people's lives, and tell those people, there's no other way. This is the way. There's no other savior. This is the savior. They were so sure they could declare that. And that's what the Lord wants of you and wants of me, that we purposefully study the scriptures so that we can be steadfast. We're looking at Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18, reading from verse 24. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. It says, And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them. They took him unto them. And personally now, purposefully now, expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. You have known the Lord, you can know him more perfectly. You are sure you are saved. That assurance can be more perfect. And you know that this is the way and there's no other way. You can so study the scriptures purposefully to be so steadfast that you know this is the way and none else. And when he was disposed to pass into a camp, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him when he was calm. He helped them much, which had believed through grace. These people that he met had already believed before, before he got there. But because he himself had become so steadfast and so solid 
and so sure and so unshakable and so persuaded and convinced he helped a lot of believers that they too could stand and your help people they will stand in jesus name luke chapter 24 reading from verse 25 luke chapter 24 we're reading from verse 25 in verse 25 then said then he said unto them here is christ talking to believers but these believers were they were doubting they said they couldn't understand some people had been to the graveside and they, they're telling us that they didn't see jesus there somebody took the body away and now jesus mixed himself with them who oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken ought not christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at moses look at that beginning at moses what does that mean genesis exodus leviticus numbers they told me beginning at moses and all the prophets what does that mean all the prophets the psalms isaiah jeremiah ezekiel daniel all the prophets he went through everything with them he expounded unto them in all the scriptures what's he called what's called scriptures here all the books of moses the scriptures all those books of the prophets the scriptures in all the scriptures the things concerning himself the things concerning himself those things that we read about in isaiah things concerning himself our savior the things we read in genesis to deuteronomy things concerning himself our savior our substitute things we read from joshua from judges and even from ruth for samuel second samuel the things concerning himself and then we're told in verse 32 look at verse 32 here it says and they said one to another did not our heart burn within us when he talked with us by the way while he opened to us the scriptures he opened unto us the scriptures about his death about his burial about his resurrection about the salvation about the sanctification about the fullness of the spirit that will come as the result of what he had expounded unto us about the life we ought to live the righteousness only by his grace the restitution only by his grace the redemption only by his grace he expounded unto us all those things our hearts burnt our hearts became warm and our hearts became sure that this is he he is the savior he is the substitute he is the final one through whom we can be connected unto god look at that verse 32 again and they said one to another after he departed from them did not our heart burn within us while he opened unto us he expounded unto us he explained to us the scriptures and they rose up the same hour and returned to jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them saying the lord is risen indeed assurance the lord is risen indeed steadfastness the lord is risen indeed they were not sure beyond any doubt any shadow of doubt every shadow of doubt the lord is risen indeed and has appeared unto simon we're looking at second timothy second timothy chapter 3 i read from verse 13 second timothy chapter 3 verse 13 but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse 
deceiving and being deceived. That's why the believer needs to study the scriptures personally and purposefully. Because deceivers are still in the world. False prophets are still in the world. And the propagators, the people who are proclaiming many religions, that there are many roads that lead to Rome. And there are many areas, there are many roads, many religions that lead to salvation. Many of those people are still there. That's why you need to search the scriptures and study the scriptures and to be so sure beyond any shadow of doubt itself says but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of you have learned those things you have been assured of them and nothing can shake you and nothing can pull you away and nothing can destroy your confidence of faith in what you have learned continue in those things that you have learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, the holy scriptures, the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. As you personally study the scriptures, as you purposefully study the scriptures, you will ask yourself, am I in line with this scripture? Is there something in my life the scripture is pointing to? Is there an area that I have not taken care of by the grace that is made available, by the atonement that is made available, and by the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb that is made available? Is there an area of my life the scripture is pointing to? And then the scriptures will be profitable to you for doctrine and for reproof and for correction and it will instruct you in righteousness that the man of God, the child of God, the minister of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. May the Lord effect that in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Look at Second Peter chapter 3, Second Peter chapter 3, we're reading from verse 14, Second Peter chapter 3. Reading from verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing ye look for such things, be diligent, without be diligent, that she may be found of him in peace, without sport and blameless. The reason you are personally and purposefully studying the scriptures is not just to acquire knowledge, it's to be ready for the coming of the Lord. It's to be ready when the Lord will come. And then he will take his own people home. You want to be sure that all the rough edges of your life, they have been chiseled out. All the stains that might have come, that may hinder you, they have been washed and cleansed and taken away, so that that day will not come to you as a great surprise. In verse 15, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, redemption, deliverance, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him as written unto you. Have you read what Paul has written unto you? And I'm not writing to you, Peter is saying, are you reading everything? Are you studying everything? And it says in verse 16, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things 
in the which some things, not everything, some things hard to be understood. If you don't study, they are hard to be understood. If you don't read over and over again, they are hard to be understood. If you don't compare them with other scriptures, they are hard to be understood. If you don't compare them with what Jesus had said, they are hard to be understood. If you are not studying diligently, they are hard to be understood. Which day that I will learn and unstable rest, the twist, the distort, as they do also other scriptures. You know what he's saying? He's saying that all those writings of Paul, they are scriptures. And then he talks about other scriptures by John, by James, by Peter, other scriptures. All the Old Testament Jesus called scriptures. And now the New Testament, from the Gospels to the Epistles, Revelation, uh, Peter here calls scriptures by the Spirit unto their own destruction. That is, it says there are people who distort the scriptures. They rest the scriptures. They twist the scriptures to their own destruction. It's as you study personally. It's as you search purposefully that you'll get the good of them. Verse 17, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also be led away by what the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace. You will grow. But grow in grace and in the knowledge. You see that? We need to grow in knowledge. How do we grow in knowledge? By purposefully searching, studying the scriptures. So we can be set fast. So we can be stronger. So we can be healthier. And so we can be more passionate in all the things of God. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To whom be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 41. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, reading from verse 41. In Acts, chapter 2, verse 41, Then did that gladly received his word, were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Those souls, 3,000 of them converted on the day of Pentecost, how did they become steady, steadfast, unmovable? How did they become so strong that nothing could shake them? Verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. You read the word and you pray on what you're reading. That makes you strong. You'll be strong. First Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. First Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Be sober. Don't live a carefree life. Be sober. Don't be frivolous. Be sober. Don't be careless. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a running lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom receives steadfast in the faith. It's when you study the scriptures, you'll be able to receive all the temptation of the devil. Everything he throws at you to make you fall. Whom receives steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. I'll be steadfast. Somebody there, I will be steadfast. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. 
For we are made partakers of Christ. We're born again. We're saved. We're sure. We're steadfast. And we are made partakers of Christ. We're partakers here. We want to be partakers over there when we get home. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. If you are personally, purposefully studying the scriptures, you will be steadfast and you will hold that conviction and you will hold that persuasion steadfast unto the end. First Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 58. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Temptation will come, be ye steadfast. The winds will blow, be ye steadfast. Sometimes doubts may even come. But as you study the scriptures personally for yourself, purposefully, so you can be steadfast, then you'll be steadfast. It says, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. How is it that some people, you know, they are there today for the work of God and tomorrow they're not there. They're looking at the wind blowing. They're looking at the clouds gathering. They have not been personally, purposefully studying the scriptures and seeing the many examples that have gone before us that they also went through much more than what we're going through. But it's as you study the scriptures, you'll abound in the work of the Lord till the end of your life in Jesus name for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord my labor is not in vain in the Lord say it say it. my labor is not in vain in the Lord and you know, sometimes you cannot even hear the testimonies of the people who are benefiting from your labor, but they are there. Sometimes they don't come to you, and they don't come to tell you, you know, brother, you know, sister, it's when you said this, it's when you did that, that's, why, that's how I came to faith in Christ. But whether you hear it or not, you'll hear it when we get to the other side. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Say it for yourself. The Lord put an amen to that in Jesus' name. Point number three now, positively sharing the scriptures to save a source. You've done it for yourself, personally searching the scriptures so you can be saved. You've done it for yourself, purposefully studying the scriptures to be steadfast. Now, you need to take those things you are studying to other people positively, passionately, prayerfully, and persistently. You need to positively share the scriptures to save souls. We're looking at Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 35. Acts chapter 8, verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. If we're going to save souls, we have to do this. You know, some people do not open their mouths when they speak to an individual. And the individual is straining his ears to hear what he's saying. Or maybe you are too fast as you open your mouth and they cannot understand what you are saying. Or maybe you are speaking a language of vocabulary that is too high for them and they cannot hear. You open your mouth wisely and you use words readily understood, easy to be understood. Verse 35, the Philip opened his mouth and he began, you have to begin somewhere, current affairs, news, 
in the air a particular scripture or some festivities or Lent has come and gone or this is Easter time or this is Christmas time or this is harvest time for them and they're talking about something and they said you know it may be a time of a drive to go to church and people are going to church and you're asking a question are you a church man are you a church woman do you go to church what do you do in the church oh, we just had a harvest in our church last sunday and it was the greatest harvest service we ever had is that so can i tell you of another kind of harvest and i pray that you'll be here there's a time when christ our lord and savior he will come he will harvest the souls of the people into the kingdom as you have participated in the harvest here i'm praying for you how you'll be able to participate in that other harvest now tell me do you know how to be a participant in that harvest oh he says yes i know i do the best i can i'll do this i'll do that you'll say you know it's good to do good but you know we cannot do enough good that will make us earn heaven and so you begin at that point of discussion and you preach unto him Jesus the only way that leads us to heaven it says he began at the same scripture and he preached he didn't discuss he preached he led him by proclaiming the word convincingly persuasively and he led him to Christ he preached unto him Jesus and then we're told in verse 36, and as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? The man had believed what they were talking. The man had prayed while they were talking. The man got everything in while they were speaking. That's positive sharing. That's persuasive sharing. And that is proper sharing of the scriptures to save souls. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, You see, there is a kind of discussion here now. And he put it to him, If thou believest with all thine heart, you must check up where the people are at. Are they saved? Are they repented? Are they willing to follow Christ and Christ alone as their salvation? Do they know there's no other way? If thou believest with all thine heart, no other idol you are going to back at home, no other religion you are going to join to this, this is the way and the only way. If you believe with all your heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water. No argument about immersion in water. No argument about, you know, I was baptized as an infant. This man had been fully persuaded, completely persuaded. When we share the word of God, positively sharing the scriptures to save souls we must not leave any stone unturned we must make sure that with all their heart all their soul all their mind they actually come to christ and then he says and he baptized him and when they were come up out of the waters the spirit of the lord called away philip that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way doing what and he went on his way shout it out rejoicing real salvation had come and the word had brought him to this assurance joy is salvation we're looking at psalm 51 psalm 51 we're reading here from verse 12 restore unto me 
the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit the joy of thy salvation do you recollect when you were saved do you recollect when you were born again do you recollect when you first had this salvation the joy in your heart the excitement in your life as if your feet would not touch the ground it's a new life it's a new way and now christ who died for us two thousand years ago became your personal salvation as you go on sharing positive sharing the scriptures to save souls will you lead them to the point they are personally shown and the spirit of god bearing witness in their heart and they have the joy of salvation and then they go on their way victorious and steadfast in the lord and then philip himself was found in another place he was still preaching the word i pray that this same experience of philip the evangelist will come upon every one of us in jesus name will be obedient to the calling of the spirit and as we're obedient to the calling of the spirit souls will come into the kingdom in a very personal way totally persuaded and totally saved in jesus name and the work of your hands will not be in vain your labor will not be in vain in the lord somebody shout an amen let's rise up and take all we have learned to the lord in prayer that you'll personally search the scriptures to be sure a real child of god and to have all the strength to live as a child of god you'll purposefully study the scriptures to be steadfast to be strong to be healed to be delivered to be protected and to have all the promises of god yes and aim in your life and you'll positively share the scriptures to get other people saved